In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, wellspring of goodness and blessings, we give you thanks and praise as one Lewisian community. The graces you incessantly grant upon us and your divine providence have sustained our beloved university throughout the years of mission and excellence. Having been founded by the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we pray that you keep us committed and dedicated to our mission and identity to serve the Church and the society as we become living witnesses to the gospel values proclaimed by Jesus. For if we are steadfast in our good and beautiful mission, our works will bring success not only to ourselves but also to those whom we are bound to love and serve. Inspired by Saint Louis, our patron saint, who was filled with a noble spirit that stirred him to love you above all things, may we also live believing that we are born for a greater purpose and mission as we dwell in your presence all the days of our life. Grant all these supplications through the intercession of Mother Mary and through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to week 3 of 21st Century Literature. Last week, you were able to read, reflect, and apply the symbols that you gathered by reflecting with the story of the boy named Crow. This week, we are to read the story of the folded earth. Love as a concept or an emotion or sometimes an illusion to others has never been easy to understand. That is why we are conducting another reading of a story this week to help us have insights about love, the mountains, the snow, or even the ocean will be reflected upon as symbols. But first, let us know something about the author. The author of the story, The Folded Earth, is Anuradha Roy. Anuradha Roy is an Indian novelist, a journalist, and an editor. She has written three novels which have been widely translated in Europe and Asia, including into Dutch, Spanish, Arabic, French, and Italian. Her work has also been read or appeared in newspapers not only in India but also in the U.S. and Britain. Among all her works, the most outstanding is our story for this week, The Folded Earth. Today, Anuradha Roy is still alive and she still lives in India. After knowing a bit of the background of the author, now we are confronted with this question, are you willing to do everything for the sake of the man or woman you love. Well, in your growing times, you are just pages away to finishing your teenage years. Soon enough, you will be meeting mountains of challenges in college that shall involve your personal judgments. Be it in a career or family, love is what matters and your choice of love is never easy. Love or family has been the center of the story of Maya and Michael in the folded earth. But to know the story more, let us dissect which aspects of their love made them split in the end. Life is full of symbolisms, an uncontested truth that brings out the relationship between our imagination in reaching our desires and aspirations in life. 
but in the story of Maya and Michael, there are practical symbolisms like distance, communication, time, religion, culture, beliefs, intervening parents, and the most prominent is mountain. Welcome to week 3 again. This is the folded earth, an atlas of impossible longing. So our two main characters are Maya and Michael. They have been completely different from each other and they come from completely opposite sides. But they fell in love together. So Maya is a Hindu while Michael um, was a Christian. Maya was a teacher and Michael was a mountaineering enthusiast. So as you can see or as you can uh, deduce from the two main characters, Maya and Michael come from completely different backgrounds. But to understand more of the story, um, I will be presenting later lines or uh, quotes from the story and let us um, dissect them for better understanding. First, let us have this line, My rival in love was not a woman but a mountain range. So, it supposes that there is some odd or unusual uh, thing that is going on between their relationship. Second, he was with me but not with me. So meaning to say, Michael was always far or Michael was not always around or beside Maya. Okay, let us describe the married life of Maya and Michael in the first few months. In the first few months, of course, it's the honeymoon stage. They were happy. It was confusing or it was um, exciting. But at the latter part, there was change in the relationship between Maya and Michael. And what does this change represent? Change represents Michael became more desperate in climbing mountains, which was opposed by Maya apparently as uh, understood in the story. Now let's have this next line. I knew from our student days together that Michael tracked and climbed. What I had not known was that his need for the mountains was as powerful as his need for me. So this line represents that the dilemma is not only on the side of Maya but is also of Michael's because Michael is also torn of his passion which is uh, to trek or mountaineering and his love for Maya. So Maya and the mountain are both important in the life of Michael. Now we have been talking about the symbol of mountain but um, in the story the mountain that is uh, present is called the Rukkun. So this is a, uh, a mountain uh, with a lake in the Himalayas uh, and until this day it is uh, frozen. A ranger stumbled in the place so it was uh, a serendipity uh, discovery and it became an enigma. Uh, since then there were about 600 travelers who died trying to reach the summit of the mountain. So this was the mountain that Michael tried to climb. So Michael planned to climb the Rupkund. This time, as is uh, shown in the story, uh, he had better equipment. He said he was timing it differently. He knew what to expect. Even so, I felt a cloud of dread grow and darken as the day for his departure neared. The trek was not really difficult, a line from the story, so it is an indirect promise of coming back. So as we can take from the lines that were presented a while ago, Michael did it voluntarily in climbing the mountain. It was 
on his own recognizance to climb the mountain and there was a dreading of uh, passion and love between Maya and Michael in the story. So since the story, if you already have read it, is an open-ended story, let us have the last part of it. The news came to me by way of my landlord, who had a telephone. They had found Michael's body after three days of searching. It was close to the lake. I was told he had almost made it out there when the landslides, rain, and the snowstorms came and separated Michael from the others with him. His body had a broken ankle, which was no doubt why he had not been able to move to a less exposed place and the face was unrecognizable, burned black by the cold. So that is pretty much the encapsulation of the story of Maya and Michael. So right now, I will be letting you view an interview by uh, Sir Harold of Maya and Michael, and they will tell us something more about their love story. All right, so in this video lecture, you will meet the two main characters in the story of Paul and Earth, Maya and Michael, in the interview with Sir H in the Languages Academy talk show. Let's all watch this. Good day, Louisians. Welcome to the Languages Academy, the talk show. And for today's episode, we'll be talking about the fall that earth. And we are so lucky this morning that we are given the opportunity to interview two of the main characters of the fall that earth. Ladies and gents, let's all welcome lovely Joy and Good morning, ma'am. morning. And of course, Mr. Vincent Batari. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, so can you introduce yourselves to our viewers? Um, hello everyone, I'm Miss Lovely Joy Orwis and I portrayed the role of Maya in the film The Fall Sir? Good good day to each and every one of you. My I am Vincent Batari and I played Michael in the story of the Fodenter and we are the main characters of the story. Okay. Okay, now let's proceed to the question and answer portion. Let's start. Okay, I guess the question is addressed to Maya. Maya, why did you say, my rival in love was not a woman but a mountain range? Um, my rival in love is not a woman but a mountain range since the dream of Michael is to climb the mountain and he has, Michael has a strong desire to fulfill his dream. So I feel like he has more time with his dream, and he spends less time with me. Okay, good to know. Okay, our next question is addressed to Sir Michael. Sir Michael, kindly describe your marriage in the first few months. Well, in the first few months, Michael and Maya really fell in love with each other. The fact that they fought for their love, they were so totally different in terms of beliefs and religions. And they fought for their love because the both of their parents were rivals. And so, it's like the story of Romeo and Juliet that they, they eloped and they fell in love with each other. And they married and they wanted um, their life to be their own. And according to the story, um, one of the stories there was that um, even if it's daytime, they were always waiting for the evening to come because they come from they come from work and they are waiting for the evening to come and to have some moment together. And if it uh, when the day rises, they in, they are having a hard time to say goodbye because they wanted to have their life together. They wanted to be alone together. So that is the first few months of the story of of the the folded earth. But let's figure out this story as the story goes by and let's see how they, their choices change their their behavior and their life as um, lovers so probably that's the thing that we're going to 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 watch out okay seems interesting okay mm -hmm. next question 
why was it important to mention that you had defied your parents in order to get married? And what does it say about your relationship? Um, our relationship is not ideal for our families because of our differences in terms of our professions. I am a teacher and he is a uh, journalist. Okay? So our dreams, our passions, are uh, we have our different dreams, passions, and dreams in life. But that is what made our love strong. And as mentioned by Michael a while ago, um, we have different religion. I am a Hindu and uh, he is a Christian. So our religion simply tells us that we cannot be together. And our families are not in favor of our relationship. And uh, since uh, he mentioned a while ago that we really, we really love each other, um, if you really love each other, you will do everything you will be able to sacrifice everything, even your family, even your religion, just because for that person, and if you really love each other. Okay. Next question. Michael's yearnings made me understand how it is that some people have the mountains in them, while some have the sea. What does this mean? Um, this line means that some people are like uh, the mountains because uh, they have high expectations, they are perfectionists, and they have great dreams. So most of the time, uh, they, are those peop uh, they are those people who really have very high expectations, very, uh, impass uh, they have impossible dreams. Okay? While some are like the sea, they always show humility, they simply go with the flow, and they usually manifest calmness inside them. I think you also have something to say. Well, I think it was already explained by you, Mom. But for me, there are always implications when it comes to the mountains and the sea. And it seems like, for me, it talks about the setting of life and because we all have choices. And it's up already to us to choose whatever life that we are tracking. And it's our choice already. For example, we choose the mountain. And if we try to choose the mountain, if we can say that, we are trying to pursue some high expectations and you need to climb up the mountain and by facing the circumstances while you are going to that and and that's the and that's the thrill of life when it comes to mountain and when we talk about the sea we know that there are different sea creatures that we are about to encounter and those are the things that or those are the circumstances that we are going to face that's why so if we come to analyze this one well, there is this saying that, um, overall, if we come to analyze this one, there's this saying that says that um, dream higher than the sky, just like the mountain, higher than the sky and deeper than the ocean. So it's already up to us whether to choose whether we would like to have an aspirations higher than the mountains or the sky or deeper than the ocean. After all, it's our choice and, and if we choose the setting of life, it's our choice. As long as we love our choice, we are passionate about our choices, then I think there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, what an answer. Thank you so much, Maya and Michael. Now let's proceed to the number five question. I guess this is addressed to Maya. I knew from our student days together that Michael tracked and climbed. What I had not known was that his need for the mountains was as powerful as his need for me. What is meant by this line? Um. Since we were in high school, or back in high school, I knew that he uh, trekked and climbed, but it was only after our marriage that I found out that the love of Michael to his passion, or to his dream, or to climb the mountain is comparable to the love he has for me. So I feel like there is a mistress in our relationship, and that mistress is his passion, his dream, the mountain, because the mountain simply symbolizes his dreams in life. Okay. Now, the question is addressed to Michael. Based on the story, can you describe Rupkan? Well, well, in the story, or let's say that the real setting of the Rupkan, the Rupkan is a lake in Himalaya, and it remains frozen. And some claim that a stranger have stumbled in the place and since then it became an enigma and there are more or less travelers who already died in the lake so you can really imagine that one that there are already a lot of people died in there 
So, and I can, we cannot even say that um, the number of the the people who died there because it was frozen and they were already covered with the with snow. So that's the con. Okay. Now let's proceed to the number seven question. This is addressed to Michael. This time he had better equipment, he said. He was timing it differently. He knew what to expect. Even so, I felt a cloud of dead grow and darken as the day for his departure neared. Now, Michael, based on the given line, what is your plan? Well, I already planned and tried to climb the mountain, but because of the bad weather and because of the equipment, I couldn't climb the, the mountain. So, for the second time, I was so sure about climbing the mountains because I had better equipment and everything was already settled. And if you really have passion in life, if you'd like to do something, and if you go for it and you keep um, all the faith, whatever circumstance that may come, if you keep on pursuing the dreams that you have, probably, um, I think you will do whatever it takes. So I think that is the characteristic of Michael. Out of his passion, that even though he knew that something is going to something bad is going to happen um, he, uh, he, he already knew that one but um, he pursued to go there i think that is the one good characteristic of michael that we uh, can look at from the story okay thank you michael now the question is addressed to maya the trek was not really difficult what do you think is the message of the line actually that line is the line of Michael in the story and <clears throat> at first I was really hesitant to allow him to climb the mountain but when he uh, mentioned or when he told me that it's not really difficult so I feel like it's an indirect promise of Michael to me that he will be able to achieve his dream and he will be able to come back to me soon after he achieved his dream and that is to climb the mountain so uh, comparing it to, uh, or if we're going to relate it to real life, sometimes there are students who, uh, who really find it hard to study, but I think if you have a strong desire to achieve your passion, your dream, you'll be able to achieve those in God's perfect time. Okay, what a word, Maya. And now we are down to our last question we keep on talking about mountain a while ago now the question is what does the mountain symbolize is that question for me oh any okay any well one? for me i think the the mountains or the mountain symbolizes the passion of michael because um he pursued into it he wanted it and that was the passion of michael Although he was a journalist, but still he had this passion, and that is to climb the mountain. If, um, even if, um, because he knew it that ever since he was in high school, he already had this kind of love, and that is to climb the mountain. So that, I think that is the passion of Michael. On the other hand, I think also that it is the dream of Michael to to climb the mountain. So it can be um, we can also interpret that the mountain can also serve as the dream of Michael. And lastly, I think it's the choice. It's the choice of Michael because um, and he knew that something is bad is going to happen to him, but he chose to have that kind of passion and because he wanted it, I think. So those are the three, I think. We have the passion, the dream, and the choice. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much, Sir Michael. <laughs> And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we would like to thank our guests for today, of course, Miss Lovely as Maya and Mr. Vincent as Michael. Now, would you like to promote the movie? Oh, sure. Uh, hello, Lucius. I'm inviting you to watch The Fall That Earth, starring, of course, me, Miss Lovely Orwis as Maya, and Vincent Battering as Michael. Also starring um, Jinky Galiza. Who else? Christine. Christine Taguba, Kurt Warren Kusa, Brian Matela, and uh, we also have Marvin. <laughs> yes, Marvin, right? Yes. Marvin, Marvin, so Marvin. Marvin. Yeah. And, and, and directed by Mr. Dumlao, Mr. Darwin Dumlao, and Mr. Ariel Turingan. And this is our entry for the upcoming. Metro Manila Film Festival this December 25 and I hope you guys are going to support this because this is not just only about the story of, of 
of a typical oh, yeah. love life, okay? A typical, a typical love. It talks about choices in life. And I hope that you will learn a lot of things in this movie. Okay, thank you so much. So don't forget the full <laughs> birth, December 25, 2020. That's all for today. This is your Sir H, your host for today. See you on our next episode. Ako ang kasama, pero hanap mo siya. Story Heaven Pollution Gems, the interview with Maya and Michael. Again, this story is all about Maya, a Hindu, and Michael, a Christian, who defied their parents for the sake of their relationship. At first, they are very happy in their relationship, but little by little, Maya realized that Michael has a great love to his passion that made her feel like climbing the mountain is a hindrance in their relationship. However, as a loving wife, Maya still supported Michael in his dream. Unfortunately, a nose came to her by way of their landward dot, a body was found near the lake. And we are not so sure if this body is Michael. So the story is open ended. So now, here are the questions which I would like you to answer. How do you think Maya will move on after the disappearance of Maya? And why do people love to be somewhere else? And just to share you my thoughts about this story, well, in life, there are really moments wherein we have to choose between two options. Okay, so you have to choose wisely since once you chose or press a button in your life you cannot take it back anymore so as young as you are you have to be strategic enough on how you are going to achieve your dreams in life remember this Louis and gems we may all be coming from the sea with a humble beginning but life will always give us the chance and the courage to climb our dreams and reach the mountain of success okay so that's all for today i hope you learned something from me Thank you and God bless everyone.